I told myself I wouldn't make a snapshot video. I told you I wouldn't make a snapshot video. This is a snapshot video. Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Pixel Riffs and here are the blocks that I am super excited about <laughs> from the 15W31A snapshot, the 1.9 snapshot, the first 1.9 snapshot that was released yesterday. And by the time I'm recording this and by the time it goes out, they will probably have published an updated snapshot because apparently a couple of features have broken the game a little bit. I think something to do with books and signs. We're going to steer well clear of those because today I want to give you kind of a builder's perspective on this stuff. Like I'm not going to go into the combat update stuff because there are tons of arrows and things there are already people using those in really really exciting ways but pvp is not necessarily my thing i'm not that great at combat but what i do like to do is build so i really want to take a look at some of these blocks and items and show you how they can be implemented in builds in the game hopefully get you guys excited for the 1.9 release and we still don't know exactly when that's going to be and when we'll get our hands on these in straight up vanilla survival in the 1.9 release but hopefully these will mostly stay the same. I, I understand that a lot of this stuff is going to be subject to change at any time because snapshots are there for people to try out and eventually it might turn out that things change up a little bit. But right now I hope they keep some of these features in the game because they are absolutely fantastic. Let's start off with purple blocks. These are the building blocks you find in end cities and there is a way of crafting them <laughs> right now, so it's kind of awesome that these are going to be reproducible once you get back to the overworld. I'll explain a little bit more about that later, but it is so nice to see them add a block to the game that has blocks, pillars, slabs, and stairs. <laughs> I didn't say those in the right order, but never mind. They are really awesome looking. I think there's definitely going to be a color palette to work with with these guys because they are this kind of pale purple color. So naturally they work really well with anything you're going to find in the end because that's where you'll find them to begin with. But these end stone bricks obviously are going to work super well with those. You'll find most of the structures in the end when you reach the kind of island things where the and cities are, are going to be made out of these blocks. But the end kind of has this purple, black, yellow kind of color scheme going on. So let me give you an example. Like if you put down some yellow wool next to these, I mean, the texture is a little bit odd, but you'll find that does not look too bad. And I think if you add in some yellow stained clay or something like that, you'll find there's a really high contrast there because if you look at a color wheel, purple and yellow are kind of on opposite sides. So there's going to be some really interesting stuff you can do with a purple and yellow color set. Um, especially if you stick to the more pale colours, like for example, if you put in some sandstone in there, it's got a slight kind of yellow overtone to it, like kind of like the end stone bricks do, and anything like that, like birch wood, I think is going to work super well with these blocks for a kind of, if you want these as your wall and have the birch wood planks as a floor, as a kind of interior, I think even the birch wood logs would work pretty well if you put a couple of those up the side because they're black and white on the outside and black and white are definitely going to go with this kind of purple it's got a little bit of kind of gray bordering around it as well and the birchwood has gray and stuff in it so i think that's going to work super well one thing i have tried out which i absolutely love so far like let's let's show you some stone bricks alongside it see it's not that bad like it's it, it actually blends together reasonably well which is nice obviously the textures kind of connect up there which is pretty cool looking you're not going to want to kind of border it with stone bricks like this but if you can work these blocks into an accent kind of status with a stone brick build I think those are going to look pretty cool like for example if you put that in there as the floor and then you can dress it up to make it a little bit more subtle and I do think this is going to be a really really awesome block to build with now anyway back onto the thing I wanted to show you cyan stained clay which if you're familiar with stained clay you know has this kind of gray color is absolutely gorgeous with this stuff like I've already made something which I'll probably rebuild here to show you guys but this is absolutely wonderful to build with these purple blocks because just look at that 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 is that is a gorgeous combination I'm really really happy with that and I've kind of built this nightclub interior set up with these two because I think they look absolutely gorgeous together and if we pop in a couple of things here I can show you where is yellow yellow stained glass as i was saying with the kind of high contrast between yellow and these i think this as a combination is really really nice and i'll show you a little bit more about how i used that in the nightclub sort of style 
set up later. Um, so moving on, we have end rods. Now these are fantastic. These are basically, think of them as end torches because that's more or less what they are. They sit there, they give off a light level of 14 and they look beautiful for modern lighting. Um, they can sit on their own like that. They have this kind of purple bit that attaches them to whatever surface you've placed them on. You can place them sideways on surfaces, which is really cool. And when you build them up like that, they kind of, they tile up to too high and then you have another purple stopper and then it kind of starts again. So you can't make infinitely long poles of these with uninterrupted kind of white texture. It has to have these purple textured bits every couple of blocks. There are definitely ways of getting around that to a certain extent, like you can place that, you can place a block there and then get rid of that and then put one there and that changes exactly where the stopper is going to be, but there is no way of getting uninterrupted white texture the whole way down. So it might be possible that texture pack creators will do something about that, but in the vanilla texture pack at least that seems to be how they work for now. So these have quite a variety of applications, not just in lighting either, but if you consider that that is going to look fairly discreet, it's going to look very modern, but it's still going to light up the area the same way a torch would, I think this is going to do wonders for lighting and modern builds. I think this is going to be absolutely fantastic for that and not to mention the fact that you can put them on a side block like that and this I've discovered is actually really interesting for creating staircases because for a start you can you can set these up so they become a staircase like this and obviously it's a little bit difficult to jump up those right now but you can place them in this kind of orientation like that with a horizontal one there, a vertical one there, horizontal one in the next space and a vertical one just in a staircase formation and then if you run up them you can actually get an uninterrupted staircase. Now if you don't absolutely sprint or, or you don't hit the right angle on them you're going to fall through. So this could be really interesting for a start Parkour, creator, uh, parkour map creators are going to absolutely love these. They're two pixels wide. The hitbox, as you can see, the wireframe there is slightly wider than that, but it's going to be really difficult to jump onto these precisely from a distance, especially. So that's going to be really exciting for parkour map creators. And it's going to be interesting to see if people implement these as stairs because they definitely have a modern look to them, just like they do for lighting. And it's really easy to kind of throw them in as lighting for an area without having to throw down a bunch of torches. So really excited to see what people do with end rods. I personally have a bunch of really cool ideas for them right now. And yeah, hopefully they stay this way or at least pretty similar when the finished 1.9 release comes out because look at that that's that's pretty gorgeous right next up we have chorus plants and chorus flowers and i guess i'll i'll show you the dragon head in between i was putting it in between those because these two will connect up otherwise but the dragon head is a droppable item now you're going to get the dragon's head the first time you kill it as far as i know and it looks pretty awesome now it's currently just an item in my hand but you can also put it on your head like so and then when you run around the mouth opens and shuts which is incredible people have also found that if you power the dragon's head with a redstone signal it will open and shut i'm pretty sure it's open by default like that but let me grab a lever and i can show you if you power it with redstone the mouth opens and shuts so there's definitely people who are going to do some really neat stuff with that um it's going to be really cool for decorating the outside of builds especially with if you keep with the end style color scheme with the kind of purple and black and yellow sort of look now uh i've actually turned off uh the tick speed because otherwise these things will grow and grow and grow and right now they do have a decent mechanic to stop them um, but I will show you the mechanics of chorus flower growing. Now, these are going to be dropped by the plants that you find in the end. So, obviously, you're going to have to go to the end and get them in the first place. And then when you destroy a plant, I'll, I'll show you how to <laughs> what happens when you destroy them in a minute. But a bunch of these are going to fall and you're going to be able to replant them on end stone in the overworld. So, or, or in any dimension, you could probably grow them in the nether if you wanted to as well. And that would make the nether look really awesome thinking about it. So I'll definitely give that a try at some point. But I'm going to turn back on the um, random tick speed just so you can see how these things grow. 
Now I've put this on a, a slightly accelerated tick speed just to give you an example. Normal tick speed is 3 and this is set to 100 so obviously these are going to grow a little slower but you can see it has this kind of pathfinding thing going on and from a bit of experimentation I found that it will only grow out sideways one block before it has to grow back up again and then when it detects that it can't grow any further up because it would border another block it stops and turns into this kind of finished flower at the top and I'm pretty sure that is what you get to destroy to get these chorus flower blocks which you can plant so you can see these are growing pretty high right now <laughs> these are definitely having a go at growing as high as they can and they're going to stop naturally after a certain point so they're not just going to keep growing infinitely but they are going to end up sort of 20 to 30 blocks high. I haven't seen the upper limit of these so I don't know if that's just random that they've stopped there and they could keep growing if they wanted to but you can add on extra limbs to them by adding more chorus flowers so if I placed a chorus plant block which you're not supposed to be able to get in the game as far as I know then it breaks them but if you add a chorus flower on top that's going to keep growing again so if you want to design these a certain way or you want them to grow randomly but you're not happy with how they've grown randomly you can destroy parts of them and have them start again as you can see this one is already growing higher so it seems to want to grow pretty high naturally I don't think there's necessarily going to be an upper limit to how you can do this for example if we put another one on there it's going to want to keep growing past where it has stopped previously so yeah there's definitely no upper limit to these you can imagine them just stretching to build height but the fun thing about these is they work kind of like cactus in that if you break the bottom stem uh, the bottom of the stem the whole thing is going to come down for you so and that's quite pretty in and of itself I can imagine it being pretty crazy for anybody who has particles enabled and doesn't have a computer that can keep up with that many particles because that is going to drop a bunch of stuff on you and it also drops all of these chorus fruit which I'll explain a little bit more about in a minute but I really like the look of these for interiors because you can create really interesting features with them now I've just broken that off at the top there and because it doesn't have a chorus flower on top anymore it's not going to do any more growing so once you've built up this kind of straight up trunk like this you can feel free to build around here more or less as much as you want and right now it's not going to connect to this ceiling that I built around it because it doesn't have a chorus flower there which is going to be more like a full block but if you place a chorus flower on top of this now it's going to realize that it can't move anywhere else and it's going to stop it's going to turn it's going to curl up and turn into one of those standard chorus flowers that you're going to find at the top of these plants in the end and if you use these for interiors they're going to look pretty cool because what you can do let me grab a slab from over here is you can kind of hem them in with slabs like that and these look kind of like either floor standing kind of pillar structures I can imagine them being used for pillars really effectively like if you put a bunch of these blocks around here or if you put stair blocks around there I imagine these looking like really interesting kind of organic pillars which could look really cool but also if you put that in the corner of a room I found it looks really cool almost like electrical trunking might or something like that and that's kind of emphasized by the fact that it has this squiggly almost like electrical current looking pattern running up the stem so I'm kind of excited to use these for build interiors I think there's a lot of applications for those I'm looking forward to that immensely um, next up we have beets <laughs> and you get beetroot seeds either I think they might end up being in farms as well but you can find them in the end in chests which you find inside of the end cities and the beetroot seeds are the ones that you plant like I was trying to shove a beetroot into this farmland for ages before I realized there were seeds in the inventory as well um, and then once you dig those up those are obviously going to turn to beets I just broke them because I'm in creative mode but you will be able to get beets you'll be able to turn those into seeds and then replant them and then enough beets will turn into beetroot soup or stew I forget what it's called uh, but it's around here somewhere there it is beetroot soup and that's been a thing in pocket edition for a while because it's been how they get red dye and things like that but it is coming over to PC edition in the 1.9 update now chorus fruit are the things that I've <laughs> already had a bunch of dropped on my by breaking that chorus plant and you'll notice that hasn't turned into the kind of stoppered uh, fruit right at the top so I kind of wonder if it's going to stay like that for now and I quite like the look of it because it's got this kind of like almost electrical burst looking thing if you're using it for electrical stuff that's definitely what it looks like now 
these chorus fruit have really interesting properties for which I'm going to show you in survival. Um, so we'll change my game mode to zero and if you eat these in survival, for right now it seems like you can eat them without having any hunger which is good because I've been doing a lot of this in creative and I don't have any hunger but if you eat them you teleport randomly. It's almost like you're an enderman. It, you teleport sort of a small distance away from your original location and you pretty much have to run back there. And this seems completely randomly done. Like it doesn't kind of work on a cycle where it teleports you a certain number of blocks away. So if you keep eating these, you can pretty much end up wherever. It's going to keep you within a certain distance, but you can you could hear that briefly. I was making a sound like an, a teleporting Enderman, so it's almost like when Endermen teleport, they eat one of these fruit, and that's what teleports them. But obviously, that's kind of not the case as far as we know. But you heard that zzz noise. That is definitely the sound an Enderman makes when it teleports. So, yeah, that's that's kind of exciting. I'm kind of wondering if there's going to be some kind of application for these in terms of map making and stuff. But the randomness of them is something that's slightly unpredictable. So you never really know if you're going to be teleported into a lava lake or if you're going to be teleported into the building next to you. So it'd be interesting. It'd be fun to use as an emergency exit, like a kind of ninja vanish sort of situation. And then you end up sort of halfway across town on the other side and you can make your escape. It's definitely going to be interesting from a PvP perspective because imagine running up to somebody with a sword. They don't have anything prepared, but they do have a bunch of chorus fruit in their hand. They eat one and then suddenly they're behind you or they're goodness knows where you have no idea where they're going to end up so that kind of opens things up from that perspective but obviously for building on their own they're not very much but if you cook them in a furnace you're going to get popped chorus fruit and then craft these in a two by two space and you get purple blocks so if you plant one of these in the overworld and then grow it over and over again you're going to get a ton of these pop chorus fruit which you can use to make purple blocks in the overworld without having to completely trash one of those end cities and from what i can tell the end cities seem a little bit few and far between at least for now so it's going to be really interesting to at least get hold of these before you find the end city dungeons to begin with. The crafting recipes for purple blocks are basically like sandstone or quartz or anything like that. So for example, if you take three of them like that, you're going to get the slabs, pretty obvious. If you put six of them in that orientation, you're going to get the stairs, again, fairly obvious. If you put them like so, and then put two slabs above each other you're going to get the pillars. Now along with the end rods this update has also introduced a different shape for glass panes and iron bars so I'll give you an example here and it's going to be a little bit difficult to see this one but normally you're used to the x shape that glass panes and iron bars make when placed on their own but now if you place them down like that they make rods. Now this is kind of interesting because they can be placed on top of the end rods like so and they align perfectly so that could be kind of an interesting feature but to make them into the standard glass panes and iron bars that you know you have to connect them to other glass panes or iron bars and that works like that for example but this is going to be really interesting because I've used x-shaped panes in a bunch of my builds recently and then if they were turned into rods when we updated to 1.9 that would kind of break them because with x-shaped panes you have a full hitbox so you can't shoot through them for example so if you think of something like the pixel rift design company building on our SMP server you will find that the window for that is going to look very different you're going to be able to just walk through it if you wanted to without connecting up the glass panes you will not have an impenetrable barrier there anymore so it's kind of interesting to see how they're going to implement those personally I kind of hope that they implement them as a crafting recipe and then keep the x-shaped glass pane so have glass rods as something completely different maybe putting three glass panes vertically in a crafting table might enable you to make these rods because they are really cool they have a whole variety of applications they are really really nice when combined with these end rods in particular iron bars should probably be the same in my opinion but it's going to be interesting to see how they end up implementing these now the really fun thing about these which I will show you if I can find where on earth they put the beacon there it is it's miscellaneous of course so now we're going to build a beacon and I will show you a new application for these rods now normally to play to color a beacon you have to put a glass block or a glass I think a glass pane will still work but you'll still see it around the outside of the beacon beam now if you put a new glass pane rod here like so it hides it in the beacon beam but still changes the color and you can do that all the way up the beacon beam like you normally could i'm going to do red and green which is going to look horrendous but there you go all right let's do something slightly different let's do red and white 
like so. And obviously this is going to involve me building them up like this. So I'll turn off the beacon beam for now and we can work with that. Like if you put red and white all the way up here, like so, and then you turn the beacon beam back on, it's gonna look like that right away. So that's really interesting. I like that a lot. I like the fact that the beacon beam completely hides the glass block because the glass pane rather, because that is going to provide some really, really interesting opportunities for coloring beacon beams. Now, of course, because it's me, my first thought when this update got published was, what is this going to change about stuff you can do with armor stands? And there is not a great deal. The armor stand is still mostly as it is, but using these glass rods, we can now kind of create a customizable element almost for armor stands, because you'll see because of how thin they are, they work pretty well if you put them through armor stands. Now, obviously they're gonna kind of peek out the sides a little bit here and there, but if you continue to push them through like that, maybe break off the top one if you don't want it poking out of there, but these actually allow you to kind of add a customizable element to armor stands in that the rods are gonna stay shoved through the armor stand like that. Let's remake this one so I can show you again. This is a way you can kind of add customization to an armor stand to make it look a little bit more unique. Now, if I push it through like that and then break this block, you'll see that that rests in there like that. You can also force end rods down onto these. So again, let me break that and show you how it works. You can, the end rod will stay in the orientation when it's pushed as well, but they are pushable. So that's gonna be really interesting to see how people work with that. But that also adds particle effects to armor stands, which is gonna be really interesting for people who work with particle effects a little bit more in their details. So now if we add on the armor like that, it's less noticeable through the rest of the armor. Occasionally something will peek through, but if you have it up there, then your gold armor is going to just be a little bit more sparkling. And I think that's a really interesting detail. I like that a lot. I think it's gonna be interesting to see how people implement this. But besides that, if you, for example, if you load this up with chain mail, like so, if you pop in like that, you're still gonna be able to see the stained glass through there. And so that adds like a, an extra element of customizability to an armor stand, which wasn't quite there before. Now I'm gonna show you just a glimpse of how you can turn these new blocks into an awesome interior. I'm gonna throw in some yellow stained glass and some gray carpet. You will see how in a second. So <laughs> I'll fast forward through this section and let's get started. So there we go, folks, just a few short minutes later, we already have ourselves a pretty awesome looking nightclub interior. You can use these glass poles for uh, tables if you want to, those look pretty cool. I think the purple pillars look fantastic as floor blocks and these are directional as well, just like standard pillars or logs or anything like that. So you can place them in different orientations if you want to, but I think those look pretty great as floor tiles. Now, this is electrical trunking <laughs> or just a kind of really neat pillar in the corner. As I showed you guys before, these you place the bottom one first, so you can place the middle two, and then you can add the top and bottom ones on the ends, and those kind of create a slightly more even pattern for the poles, and they sparkle, very glitzy, and I reckon the yellow stained glass looks fantastic next to 
cyan stained clay and these purple block stairs so those are looking pretty cool i'm really excited to see how this snapshot changes things i'm looking forward to seeing how people use these blocks and how things progress as we get more snapshots and more glimpses of what's coming in 1.9 a lot of it will be combat related as it is the combat update but just these blocks alone have me really excited for what's coming up in future so for now i'm going to leave it there because i've already talked for long enough Thank you very much for watching this video. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed a bit of a builder's perspective on the 15W31A snapshot and look forward to more videos from my channel in future. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.